Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up Stable Diffusion on Microsoft Azure. And this is going to be using a VM on Azure that has an NVIDIA GPU. Now the NVIDIA GPUs available on Azure are world-class data center GPUs that are on par with some really high-end GPUs that you can get in a desktop computer. And if you don't want to pay for one of those high-end GPUs, this is a way to get access to high-end performance without having to actually buy the hardware. Now, if you were to pay the full retail price for some of these GPUs on Azure, you would pay a lot of money, but there is a way that you can get them at a reduced rate as long as you're willing to deal with the caveats. Microsoft Azure VMs have what are known as spot instances. And a spot instance is basically a leftover capacity that's not being used. So what Microsoft Azure and other clouds will do is they will auction that off to somebody that's willing to pay for it at a reduced rate so long as they don't need that capacity. And in the minute that they need that capacity, uh, then you will be you know, basically booted off and they will use that capacity for whoever is willing to pay the full retail rate. But as long as you're willing to deal with those kind of caveats, you can get access to these GPUs and use them uh, for something like stable diffusion and pay a much reduced rate, basically cents on the dollar, what you would pay for otherwise if you were paying the full retail price. So I'm going to show you how to set this up using a spot instance and then show you how to get access to it through an SSH shell. And I'm basically going to uh, show you how that you can connect to it using Using SSH and then use your browser to uh, log on to your instance of Stable Diffusion and also how you can uh, move files back and forth between that instance as well uh, using FileZilla. So let's go right into how to deploy this and then we'll go into how to connect it and then also how to move files back and forth. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have these vCPUs enabled. So to do that, go to the Azure portal and search for quotas and the search up here. And then you'll see all of these different quotas available to you. Quotas are there basically to keep you from over allocating things. So you can put these as safeguards in place and there's a lot of defaults, but you can increase them as well. So the one that we're gonna be interested in is compute. And then I'm going to filter this based on my subscriptions. So I'm gonna select pay as you go. And then I'm gonna select a region that I wanna to deploy to, which in this case is gonna be like East US 2. So uh, it doesn't really matter what region that you use, as long as it has the NVIDIA GPU enabled VMs available in it, which is in my case, East US 2, which might be West US 2 or some other region. And you will want to search for total regional spot vCPUs right here and make sure that you have at least eight. If you have zero right here uh, as the total, then you can check on this and click on new quota, uh, quota request, and then you can enter in a value. Usually, eight or 16 is probably reasonable. Um, now, if it's a larger number, then that might raise red flags. But if you're requesting like eight or 16, that's usually gonna go through without a problem. I requested 16, which is fine for me, but eight's gonna be fine for running the particular VM that we're interested in. And then you uh, click submit and sometimes it's automated, but if it's a subscription that needs an approval, it might take a while. Or if it's a subscription where these are disabled, it might not even work, but you need to make sure that this is available on your subscription that you're gonna be deploying the VM to so that you can actually run this script and, and deploy the VM. Now, once you have the quota increased for uh, spot instances, the next thing that you'll want to do is come to my GitHub repo to deploy this. Now, this is a very basic repo. There's not a lot in this. Basically, a, an ARM template, a, a script, and a readme file. And the readme file just gives you uh, instructions on how to run this particular ARM template and script to deploy this. If you want to do it more through the CLI, it gives you details on all that. So it's just documenting what's in the script. But if you don't care about all that, the easiest way to deploy this is just to click on this link right here under the TLDR. And then that will take you over to the Azure portal and use the Azure portal to deploy this ARM template. And it'll give you a UI for doing this. So this is pretty straightforward. You just basically choose the subscription that you added the quota to, and then make sure that you have a resource group. In this case, I'm gonna use this SD group right here and make sure the region matches uh, for whatever that you're using it for. Uh, you can do East US 2, I also have these available in East US 2, uh, East US as well uh, for uh, my spot instances. So I'm gonna use this region and I'm gonna call this Blaze SD1 and give it a, a username and give it a password. Now you'll want to remember the what username and password you're using here because you're gonna need them to log into this VM later on. And once you're uh, set up like this, just click review and create and 
that's going to run a final creation and then you click create and then you're off to the races. And this will take about 10 minutes to deploy because it's got to deploy the resources, which generally doesn't take very long. It's the script that takes a while to deploy because it's got to install a ton of dependencies uh, in that repo. Uh, if you go back to the repo, uh, GitHub repo that this deployed from, you'll see that it's doing a ton of stuff in the script to deploy Stable Fusion. Uh, because it's got to install the NVIDIA drivers on the VM, and it's also got to, got to install in CUDA and a ton of dependencies for uh, Stable Diffusion to work as well that are all wrapped up inside of uh, this particular package that you download from the repo for Stable Diffusion. So give it some time, and when it's done, maybe about 10 minutes, it will come back and you will be able to log in. So I'm going to let that deploy, and then I'm going to show you how to log into it. So once the, the, the deployment is finished, you'll see a bunch of resources deployed. You'll want to reboot the VM. So if uh, you see it running like this, you might have a restart disabled. You can just stop and restart it again. Uh, so hit start and then uh, stop. It'll deallocate, then hit start again, and it will reboot uh, the VM. And the next thing we want to do is copy the IP address for the VM. So once you've copied that, we're going to launch a terminal and it doesn't matter what you're using, SSH on Windows or command prompt, whatever, it doesn't matter. And we're going to type in SSH and we're going to do a local port forward. So we're going to port forward uh, 7860, which is the default port for Stable Diffusion, to localhost, which is localhost on the other end, and then point it to 7860 on that end. Then type in the name that you provide for the admin user and then at and then put in the IP address for the VM. Now, once that is created, then we're going to uh, click hit enter or click uh, go and then open this up and then type in the password you supplied and everything should be up like this. So this is going to have all of your uh, stuff deployed. So we're gonna launch a new window right here and then we're going to just browse to localhost and 7860. And that should launch Stable Diffusion. And you will have something that looks like this. This is just the Stable Diffusion UI. And you can enter your prompt. So uh, say dog carry a Frisbee or something like that I, I am in a park. And just let it create an image to test it. And this is going to use this default model, which isn't truly all that great, but... Um, it will create an image in any case. Now, if you want to get content into this, that's where having uh, FileZilla available is going to be of the essence. So FileZilla is an FTP solution. And what it allows you to do is uh, basically send files back and forth to something like an Azure VM. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to come over here to new site and we're going to paste in the IP address that we pasted into um, the, the browser, or rather the SSH whenever we connected to that. And we're going to connect to port 22, and we're going to do SF, F, SFFTP, which is basically uh, running this over SSH, so SSH file transfer protocol. And then for the user, we'll put in the user, the admin username and the password. We're going to put in the same username and password that we supplied to uh, our a particular instance whenever we create the VM. And this will create uh, a connection to that. So I'm going to accept the fingerprint. And now from here, we're going to go to Stable Diffusion on the root. So if you go to the root, you should be able to browse to Stable Diffusion right here. And the user that you logged in with has access to everything in this folder because it's uh, to the, the owner is the user that you created this with. And the place to put models is going to be uh, in this models folder. And then you can come to Stable Diffusion. And this is where all your checkpoint models go. So if you want to upload a new checkpoint model to this, you can download one from like Civitai or H uh, Hugging Face and then upload it to this. Or if you have the link, you can just use wget on the command line, which is probably easier. But if you're not familiar with how to use that, then just use FileZilla is fairly easy to use. And then LoRa's right here is where you can put all your LoRa's. If you're going to um, download those from Civitai or from Hugging Face, you can 
upload those into your LoRa folder right here. And then if you want to download the images that you create, if you downloaded, if you created them in the past, then you, there's no way to really download them in the past and in, in the UI here. You can download them just using this disk icon um, right here and save the, the image. So you can open this in a new tab and you know, save as uh, and save the image. Or the other thing you can do with a FileZilla is you can come over here into the outputs folder and the uh, use text to images. And you can then see all the images by day that you created. And so you can download these by way of FTP back to your local box if you wanna use them, or you can reverse that and upload stuff to this as well. Now, of course, if you want to use the uh, features like image to image or uh, things like that, or you wanna do PNG info, you can upload uh, images that you might have downloaded, such as this one right here, and it's going to parse that image uh, and then I can send that prompt and it will basically set everything up here inside of my text images with an image that I previously downloaded, whatever that might be. So this is just a way to use this. Uh, now, if there's interest in this and uh, there's folks that are interested, I, I could probably extend this some to probably add maybe a web-based file management system and then also create maybe a, a, an a SSL front end for this uh, so that you can secure it and then put it behind like a reverse proxy so that you could have a login uh, or that kind of thing like that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it using SSH to log into this and then connecting it to it from a local host uh, with a port forward through SSH and also using FTP to move things back and forth, which works fairly well. And it's also very secure that way as well. But in any case, uh, this is Running on Azure, it works great. It's really fast. Uh, you have world-class GPUs, lots of storage, fast SSDs, everything that you would have in a local box for running Stable Diffusion uh, that would give you very high performance and very good results as well. So, um, as well. So if you like this content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also share it with your friends. And as always, look forward to seeing you on another video. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.